This section here will be showing the relationship between the absolute temperature, pressure, volume, internal energy, entropy, and heat and work. So this table here shows the relationship between the five thermodynamics properties with heat and work. So here we have process. We have four processes. First is isothermal. Then we have constant pressure or isobaric. Then we have constant volume and constant entropy. Showing the relationship between the changes in temperature, pressure, volume, internal energy, entropy with heat and work. So based on isothermal process, we have the law PV equals to C, which is the Boyce law. Then for constant pressure, we have V over T equals to constant. Then constant volume, we have P over T equals to constant. And for constant entropy, we have P to the power of PV to the power of gamma equals to C. So for isothermal alone, the changes in temperature is zero. And while the changes temperature is zero, and according to Boyce's law, the increase in pressure will result in a decrease in volume, or a decrease in pressure will result in the increase in volume. And for this case, the changes in internal energy equals to zero by Joule's law, which states that when the absolute temperature increase, the changes in internal energy will increase. When the changes in absolute temperature decreases, the changes in internal energy will also decrease. But when the changes in temp absolute temperature is equal to zero, the changes of internal energy also will be equal to zero. Then for the changes in entropy, we have both of this formula, where M stands for mass and the R stands for the characteristic gas constant. Log base E, P max over P min, or you can consider V min over V max, that is minimum volume over maximum volume. So when the pressure is maximum, the volume would be minimum. And when the pressure is minimum, then the volume would be maximum based on the isothermal process. And as for heat, you have Q is equal to W. That is based on non-flow energy equation, which is Q equals to the changes of internal energy plus work done. But in this case here, the changes of internal energy is equal to zero. So that is why you have Q equals to W. And, or you can wrote it, write it as T bracket S2 minus S1, which is in this case, Q is equals to W. And this T S2 minus S1 can be obtained by the area under the process path of a TS diagram under isothermal condition. And this is the work done. And for isothermal, we can refer to Boyce law and Joule's law as well. Then for constant pressure, this is when the pressure, the changes in pressure is zero, any increase in temperature will result in an increase in volume, or a decrease in absolute temperature would result in the decrease in volume. So we have the changes of internal energy equals to Q minus W. Q is heat and W is work. 
So that is also again based on the non-flow energy equation. This formula that we use for the change of entropy for the constant pressure process and for the heat we have CPT. Okay, CP represents the specific heat capacity at constant pressure. T max is the maximum absolute temperature minus the minimum absolute temperature. And for work done, we can consider P, that is the absolute pressure, multiplied by V max minus V min, which is also can be obtained by considering the area under the process path of a PV diagram during a constant pressure process. So basically, constant pressure can refer to what we call the Charles Law. Then for constant volume process, that is now the changes in volume is zero. So when the changes in volume is zero, so that is the relationship between the pressure and the temperature. So when absolute temperature increase, the pressure will increase or when the absolute temperature drops, the pressure will decrease. And changes in volume is equals to zero. And again here, the changes of internal energy can be equal to Q minus W. But in this case, at constant volume process, the work done would be equal to zero. Because during constant volume process, there would be no displacement work. And this is for the changes in entropy. So we have MCV log base E T max over T min. So CV represents the specific capacity at constant volume. And for heat, you have this. For work, it is equal to zero. So during constant volume process, work is equal to zero. But <clears throat> if volume increase, then we will have work output. When <clears throat> it undergoes a decrease in volume, that is during compression, you will have work input which will be defined in the later stage. So we follow pressure law for constant volume process. Then now constant entropy process can follow the law of PV to the power of gamma equals to C. And these three columns here shows you the relationships between the relationship between the absolute temperature, pressure and the volume. So when temperature, absolute temperature increase, pressure increase, and volume decreases. And when absolute temperature decrease, pressure will decrease as well, but the volume will undergo an increase, increase, increase. So the change of internal energy for this case, okay, we have to refer to the non-flow energy equation again. For the change of entropy, is equals to zero since the entropy is constant and we can say that when the entropy is constant the heat flow or the q will be equal to zero as well because we know that changes in entropy or entropy is actually defined as the measures of molecular disorderness or randomness so when there is no changes in entropy we we'll predict that there is no heat flow or no heat transfer. So in this case, since Q is equal to zero, and according to non-flow energy equation, the work will only be equal to the changes of internal energy. And we can say that change of internal energy is also equal to CV times T max minus T min. That is, Internal energy would be equal to the product of CV and T. And in other case, when you have changes in enthalpy, that is H, then you would have CV delta T. So constant entropy process, also known as an adiabatic process or an isentropic process. Adiabatic process actually refers to a system which it undergoes a perfect thermally insulated condition or it is no heat flow that is known as adiabatic 
So there's no heat flow, then we can also call it as isentropic process, which, re which represents the constant entropy process. So here I have <clears throat> T for absolute temperature in Kelvin, pressure P in Newton per meter square, absolute volume in meter cube, or you can consider specific volume as well, which is in meter cube per kg. Then you have internal energy or absolute internal energy, which is in kilojoules. Specific internal energy would be in kilojoules per kg. And entropy would be in kilojoules per Kelvin. That is for the absolute. And for the specific value, we have kilojoules per kg Kelvin. And Q for the absolute heat in kilojoules, work for the absolute work in kilojoules. M's for mass in kg, CV for specific heat capacity of constant volume, which is in kilojoules per kg Kelvin, CPS, specific heat capacity of constant pressure, so this is constant pressure in kilojoules per kg K. R is the characteristic gas constant, which is in kilojoules per kg K. Gamma will be the adiabatic index. And this is the non-flow energy equation. Q minus W equals to the changes of internal energy for any reversible processes. Here I have the isothermal process for a TS diagram on the TS diagram, which shows the temperature as the y-axis, the absolute temperature as the y-axis, and the entropy as the x-axis. And since it's an isothermal process, so it undergoes a constant temperature process, which shows a horizontal line here. So we have, let's say, 0.2 and 0.3. Okay. You can even consider 0.1 and 0.2, which is constant temperature. So from here, you can see the changes of entropy from S2. It increases to S3. In this case here, yeah, it's actually a heating process where it undergoes an increase in entropy because the degree of randomness, molecular randomness or disorderness increases. So that is why the entropy increase when you have a heat supply. Yeah. So the area of this is actually representing the heat. So basically to measure heat, that is to find out the area under the process path of this TS diagram. That is height multiplied by the base. So the next is for the isobaric. So this we will be referring to a PV diagram. P for the y-axis, V for the x-axis. And it's a constant pressure process. So from this diagram, you can also see there's a horizontal line from two to three. Constant pressure. And then you have a change in volume from V2 to V3. And this area, under the process path represents the work done. And that is an increase in volume. So the area of this, we can say is that is equals to work output for expansion. Work output, that is work done by the system. Work input is a compression process, which is decrease in volume, and it is work done on the system. So this is work out expansion and work in for a compression process. So area under the process path is equal to work done. So basically you just take the height multiplied by the base. So basically in this section here it shows it shows you the relationship between pressure, volume and temperature based on Boyce, Charles, and pressure law. From here, you have Joule's law. And for adiabatic process, here that is stated that the change of entropy will be equal to zero, where the Q is zero. So area of the TS diagram is equivalent to heat flow. And it follows or obeys the law of PV to the power of gamma equals to C. So when the change of entropy increase, 
we can consider as heat supply and when the changes in entropy decreases we can call this as heat rejected or cooling so for constant pressure con sorry constant volume process where the changes in volume is zero work done will be equals to zero and the area of pv diagram is equivalent to work done and when the change in volume decreases that is compression work input work done on the system and the changes in volume increase that is an expansion process or that is work output that will be considered as work done by the system so here in this section here it shows you three different curves one is based on the isentropic process or the adiabatic process where n is equal to k or k can also be equal to gamma in this case here they use k so actually we can use gamma as well which is known as the adiabatic index the second curve shows you a polytropic process and the third one shows you the isothermal process which follows the law of pv equals to c and here we have two sets of formula one set is for the polytropic process where the n are known as where the n they are known as the polytropic index and for isentropic the k or gamma sometimes we use most of the time we use gamma would be called the adiabatic index now this set of formulas is restricted only to use for isentropic where you got the power of k and polytropic where you got the power of n okay it is not for the constant pressure temperature and constant volume process these are particularly for the isentropic and polytropic so here i show you the constant pressure process and how to get okay to the formula of q equals to cpt where it is the heat flow is equal to the specific capacity constant pressure multiplied by the temperature difference so this is a constant pressure process so the next slide refers to the constant volume process so here i have show you i've shown you a pv diagram with the with a constant volume line which represents a constant volume process so it's a straight vertical line on the pv diagram and it has no work done from here that's what you see okay so the next one is the adiabatic process where it appears on the pv diagram as a curve that is the constant entropy line the curve follows the law of the pv to the power of gamma equals to c and to find the area under the curve you have to apply or you have to use the integration application and the way of obtaining the formula is shown here as well okay so that's all for this section before we move in to the gas cycles the first cycles that we will be looking at will be called the Carnot cycle